I'm good. How are all you? All right. All right. Um, this is going to be the best birthday present I could have because I've been a pain in your backside trying to get this thing straightened out. So I, I want to start <laughs> off by thanking you, and I'm glad that things are actually working out. So um, anyway, the purpose of this interview today is to talk about Miss Erin Marie and her new movie that came out on October 5th called Hold Your Breath. So if you guys don't mind, we're going to go ahead and um, watch this clip. Um, all right, and it's not kept the, the trailer for Hold Your Breath. Yeah! Yeah! Let's start our first annual camping trip. Oh. You guys ready? Woo! You guys say you want to have a nice weekend, relax, no phones, no bosses. Oh, check out that old graveyard over there. Hold your breath! person dies and they're forced to roam around the cemetery that they're buried in searching for souls to possess when you drive past the cemetery you have to hold your breath or else they can possess you never heard of it you okay hey sam and tony back yet okay i'm really starting to freak out now <laughs> what's the matter with you there's a graveyard up on the road out there did you all pass that graveyard on your way in did you hold your breath? What is that? Very good job. What did you do to her? We're killing her now! Get out of my way! <laughs> so... Why, why, why is it that you're laughing? I'm just curious. It, it's just funny, like, to watch stuff like that and think about like everything that happened on, on set, like when we were shooting some of that stuff. It, it's just funny. <laughs> right. Well, I've never been in movies, but I have been in some stage productions, and I can actually empathize with that because there, there's something just like you know, WTF. I mean, where, where do they get this stuff? It sounds like you know, <laughs> if we could be like impromptu like this on stage and but anyway um let's talk about the movie a little bit and um and kind of throw in a little bit about your character and the movie so in, inform us a little bit okay um hold your breath is um it's a supernatural thriller slash horror movie about um a bunch of friends who go off camping and pass a graveyard and the one of the friends, played by Katrina Bowden, um, informs the rest of us that we need to hold our breath because there's an urban legend that if you don't hold your breath when you pass a graveyard, then evil spirits can possess you. So um, obviously it wouldn't be any fun if everybody held their breath. So, so <laughs> right. somebody doesn't do it right. Right. And it has to be a guy, though, right? <laughs> well, yeah, it, yeah. You know, so... But, so, uh, yeah, and then, you know, the camping trip uh, goes, you know, a little sour from that point. <laughs> okay. Now, what, what part, what does your character, what part does she play in all of this? Um, I play Natasha, and um, Natasha is the girlfriend of Johnny, who's played by Randy Wayne. Um, when you have these horror movies, I feel like you have to have all the typical characters that you want to die and that you don't want to die. So right, right. Um, as far as the girls go, she just kind of rounds it out. We have um, kind of the, the nicer girl that it didn't really do anything wrong that you don't really want to see die. We've got kind of the preppy girl that you do kind of want to see die, which is kind of annoying. Right. And um, then you've got Natasha, who's just kind of the wild card, um, rounding out the group, somebody for everybody to relate to. Right. Okay. Well, that that's nice. Um, what with this movie? What what's the big difference between this movie and the others that you have have been in? Because you work Asylum puts out this movie. Um, of course, Paranormal Entity was the big one for you starting out, um, which was also put out by Asylum. So, what what's the big difference between this movie and the others? 
Um, you know, I, I think with this movie, we had, um, we had some names. We had a couple names in, um, in Six Guns as well, but it kind of just changes the whole way that the set works um, a little bit. Um, and um, so we, we had that, and um, this particular movie was just really kind of special for me because I had worked with um, the writer, um, Jeff Mead, before on another Asylum picture, and um, so it was, it was really cool that, this, that I was um, in his mind for this part, and so it was just kind of extra special to get to work on this, knowing um, that somebody that I worked with before really wanted to see me in it, and um, so so that was just kind of a different experience to be like, just kind of walking into it like somebody went here. <laughs> right. That, that was um, that was fun, but this this one was um, a lot was put into it with the with the names and um, a lot going on in pre-production um, because it was the Asylum's first theatrical release. Um, so this was in theaters um, starting October 5th in selected AMC theaters. Uh, so there was a little bit of a, I think, a different level of just enthusiasm, maybe. <laughs> right, right. So so does this make you feel good to know that, you know, people are going to be seeing you on a more widespread level then? Um, it does. It's it's always really exciting when you have um, that kind of validation, and um, it's really cool to know that this is going to be out there for casting directors and people to see. Um, I think still the widest spread thing that I've done is probably Paranormal Entity, and people are going to continue being able to watch that just... Um, <laughs> because it was so misleading, because right. the normal activity didn't really show um, the movie at all in the trailer. So I think a lot of people grabbed Paranormal Entity and didn't even realize they were watching the wrong movie. Right. And I think right. that's probably going to continue to happen. So in my opinion, that's probably still more <laughs> widespread. But this is definitely like a big accomplishment um, that I'm that I'm really excited about. Right now. You, you you not only act but you model, you sing a little, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> a little bit, okay. Um, so you model, you sing. Um, you you're part of a new web series that has just started. Um, how how do you find time for all of this? Because I mean, not not only with that that you know with the acting, but um, you're going to school. And you also teach classes. Where do you find the time to do all that, and then actually sit down and do interviews like this without falling asleep? <laughs> um, you know, I I just kind of keep myself going. I'm not really one of those people who likes to sit around and not do much. So right. if I'm if I'm sitting around and not doing anything, then I must be really, really ill. Um, right, right. <laughs> so I kind, of, I kind of cram my day full. I mean, I have a little bit of time, but um, a lot of it is just stuff that I like to do, and so it typically doesn't feel like work. If I can fit it all in, then I'm going to fit it all in. And that's just kind of how my life has always been. <laughs> right. Well, you, you definitely have family and friends in your life. Um, how, how do you find time to put them into any activities that you have, like during the day, like if you want to go shopping or go lay out by the pool or, you know, go out and do whatever? How, how do you find time for them? Do you just have to, like, schedule it down on your calendar? or? Yeah, I I have to schedule everything way in advance. I, I need to know what I'm doing, and um, that's partially kind of just the kind of person that I am is that if I don't have – everything scheduled and I don't know exactly when I'm doing everything from this time to this time then um, I get I get a little bit freaked out anyway um, right so sometimes things come up and I happen to not be doing anything and then that works out awesome and I get to go do something <laughs> but, no, um, like this interview <laughs> <laughs> but you know I have to schedule things really far in advance just um, mostly because that's just kind of how I am and how my brain works so um, uh, I think my friends find it pretty annoying. Um, 
<laughs> well, I mean, when, when you're friends, you, you just want to hang out and do. I mean, life can't be all about work. But Yeah. Yeah, luckily most of my friends are um, they're in this industry, and they understand that. And if they're not in this industry, then um, if we're still friends, then it's because they've, you know, figured out how to deal with, you know, the fact that can't necessarily at any given time go do something, but can always right, right. ask and hopefully not be annoyed if I can't. <laughs> right, right, understood. Well, I have seen that you have been working your backside off um, because you have actually been nominated and won several awards for your acting in the horror genre. Um, let's talk about that. What are some of the things that you won, some of the awards you won? Oh, wow. Um, well, I was, I was named um, a Gourmet of the Month for Paranormal Entity, and um, from that I was nominated for Gourmet of the Year with Gorezone Magazine um, over in the UK. Um, I also won, um, for The Confined, I won Best Actress in a Drama. Um, and for The Confined, we also won, um, we also won Best Director, we won um, Best Drama, we won um, um, Best Horror. Uh, so we've got, we've got a lot of things out of that. I'm really proud of that one. That's one of my, my prouder moments. Um, uh, Zombies and Assholes got, um, Best Ensemble Cast, uh, nomination for Best Actor, um, a nomination for Best Actress. Um, yeah, a lot, yeah, lot of stuff. So it's, <laughs> right. it's cool. Well, um, I, yeah, obviously there's a lot of people who like what they see with what you're doing, so uh, you know, obviously that's paying off. Um, I, I'm going to switch questions up. Look, a little bit. I want to go ahead and ask you about what your parents think now. Your mom and dad are very supportive of what you do, but they're, I, I won't put this slightly, there's a difference in the support that your mom gives compared to what your dad gives. Um, explain that. Um, you know, my my parents are, have always been really supportive of whatever I want to do and um, just trying to give me every opportunity to do whatever it is that I'm passionate about. Um, part of that uh, comes out of me just, you know, being my dad's little girl and um, I, every, every dad kind of wants to give the best for their daughter and um, so my dad doesn't really understand the industry or anything like that. but. Everything that I do, he's he's just so proud of everything, and like it's it's just really um, I don't know. It's it's kind of like overwhelming to see uh, how proud my dad is, and um, you know he shows like everybody at work and tells everybody at work about about everything. Um, my my mom, on the other hand, um, my mom was a a drummer when she was a kid, and um, that kind of felt through for her and um, I think she kind of felt like she didn't get the opportunity that she wanted and she wants to make sure that that doesn't happen to me um, and so she's been extremely supportive she does understand um, the business um, and and things like that and it's been so it's kind of a, a different kind of support where my dad is just kind of like he just praises everything that I do because I'm <laughs> a you know, little girl and right. my mom Kind of like, well, if you want to do this, then you need to do this and this and this and this, or else it's just not going right. to happen. You need, you need to not whine, but good job. <laughs> right, right. Now, kind of a semi-personal question. Are you the only child? Yes, I'm the only child. Okay. Well, so, hey, you know, you get all, all the perks of being solo, so that's all right. It's true. It's true. Um, <laughs> uh, hey, you know, that's all right. Um, now, there's some... We've been primarily talking about the modeling. There have been some music videos that you have been in. And I've, I've got listed that you were in five. Um, what, what, what was that like? Um, I, I'm thinking the most famous one that you was in was with uh, Pink. 
and raise your glass, correct? Yes. What, what was it like working with Pink? I mean, that, that has to be a dream gig. Is yes. it not? Okay. Pink, Pink was so... She was so cool. Like, I mean, you don't you don't get to sit and like talk to these people or or anything like that. Just like chat and have lunch or anything. But right. she was really cool to to be around. I didn't really realize what I was getting myself into when I auditioned for the thing. Um, I really didn't get it until I was there, and they were like, "Alicia's walking," and I was like, "Wait, Alicia? Like Alicia Moore?" like pink Alicia Moore <laughs> and then right. I made the connection between it saying pink and her being pink um, right. but I really didn't actually know I hadn't even, we hadn't even heard the song nobody had heard the song uh, right. until she got there and so I was kind of like Okay. Ah, there we go. Yeah, okay. yeah uh, uh, you cut off there for a second. I don't know what. Yeah, it went was. away. Um, so, um, so it was kind of it was kind of crazy. And when she actually got on set, um, they they had us all. Um, well, we were we were supposed to be a bunch of religious figures, and the implication was that Pink had had sex with all these religious figures, but in a, in a funny way. And um, so. <laughs> when when she got there and we were doing this, like it, I, they told me what I was going to be doing, but it didn't really hit me until we started going down the line and we all had to get into the bed and then like do something and then get back out of the bed and walk away. And I was like, "But I'm getting in a bed with Pink, and this is weird." And <laughs> <laughs> it was just really cool. Like she, like took every person she was supposed to like just kind of like tackle us and then we'd like sit back up and she was just like laughing the whole time. She was just so like happy and joyous about what she was doing and it was so fun and at one point they asked if any of us would have a problem with being like disheveled, like having, um, you know, like shirts off or, or things like that and I was like, oh, I don't care. And um, I was like, well, I, you know, died topless for a living so that's cool and she looked at me from in the bed and she's like you die topless for a living do you know how cool that sounds and I was like I was like oh it sounds a lot cooler now that pink said it right right <laughs> and I was just like she was, she was just really cool and really down to earth and like seemed really excited and to be having a lot of fun with what she was doing right. and can you, can you tell? It was like a starstruck moment for me. Can you tell? <laughs> right, right. Understood. <laughs> well, the, this next question is kind of a loaded question because um, in, you and I aren't exactly close friends, but in the um, corresponding that you and I have done, it, all, it, it seems like you're presenting yourself to me and to your fans what maybe Pink, you're saying Pink was doing for you because usually we think and this is my my opinion, but usually we think that people such as yourself, who's known nationally for acting, are these rich, stuck-up people <laughs> who have this attitude. And um, being that I, I went to school for acting, you don't always have time to just sit back and do. But you know, whenever you do have a chance to interact with someone of you know your stature or who whom you think is you know larger than life themselves and then you find out that hey they're just a regular person just like I am and I'll um, and I'm assuming that's what you're saying with her because you know here it is here I'm thinking you know dude if I would could just be in the same room as pink you know I'll be happy you know but um, do, do you actually find that that's a misconception with people with you when they interact with you because it's like Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I understand that when I email you, you don't always have time to email me back for whatever reason. But you you have had some people um to put it lightly express negative viewpoints about you. Yeah. Um and, and I yeah, I don't want to go into details about <laughs> that because um you know, it's making me not like them for saying that kind of stuff, but but thing of it is, you know, 
how, how does something like that make you feel? Because, you know, here it is, you know, you have a job, and so, you know, you, you know, you have your job, you've got classes you teach, you, you, you're you going to class, um, you have, you know, your little baby tater tot that you have to take care of, and, you know, you've got all these other things that you have to deal yeah. with. Oh, there she is. Hey, tater tot. <laughs> Precious <Hello>. little girl. <laughs> now, how old is she? Um, we're not really sure. She's somewhere between 8 and 10. Um, she's okay. a rescue, so um, most of her teeth had to be pulled, and so it's hard to tell how old she is. Right. But she's Mama's little girl, though, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that, that is all right. I, mean, I, I bet she's not as much trouble as well normal child would be. <laughs> so, yeah, she, but, this, this is my child. <laughs> okay. But um, how, how does all this negative stuff make you feel? I mean, it, it can't make you feel good. I mean. Yeah, you know, it's it's frustrating, especially when it's about um, just about my attitude in, in general or like my demeanor towards people because people are going to think and say whatever they're going to think and say and what people think about me really isn't any of my business but it's it's just concerning when people um, express these negative feelings about me and they don't really know me um, I, I get a lot of negativity because people message me on Facebook and either say inappropriate things or um, they'll message me when I just you know, I don't I don't check that Facebook a lot. It's mostly for people that I've worked with and things and things like that to keep in touch with. Right. Um, but I've added a couple other people and I don't I don't really like do business through there. I'm not using it as like a dating site. Like I get a I get a lot of people like hitting on me through Facebook and stuff like that. And I guess people do that, but like I just don't have time so I, I tend to just either ignore it or I honestly haven't seen it. And right. so it's it's agitating when I try to just, you know, like let something mean or something inappropriate go, and then somebody goes and starts bringing it up in public um, and being really mean and rude and, and calling me names and things like that because these people don't know me, and just because I didn't answer their inappropriate comment, now they think I'm some terrible stuck up person and right. it's really just like you know if we were walking down the street and you saw me you wouldn't say something like that to me so what makes you think it's okay when you're online like I'm not going right. to be somebody who treats me or anybody else in a demeaning or negative kind of way it's I'd rather just ignore it and I guess people get really offended by that but it it does it hurts a, a little bit just because it's it's hard to figure out where the happy medium between just ignoring these people and addressing the problem without offending someone is and I've right. kind of just discovered that pretending they didn't say it and letting them get mad and then deleting them is just kind of the best way to go about it and people can think what they want to think I've never met that person so if right. they think I'm, I'm mean and are you know stuck up what are they forming that opinion based on? The fact right. that I never talked to them, you know? So it's, right. it's frustrating, it's it's hurtful, but I have to remember that I never even spoke to that person. So right. what could they possibly know about me? Right. Now, kind of on the other end of that, um, it, obviously with the awards that, that you have won, there's and so, some other comments that have been made that have been positive. How... How how does that make you feel? Because on the one end, the negative, you know, makes you feel bad. But yet, um, even if there's fewer negative comments, that tends to mess with people. And so, whenever someone does compliment you on your talent, you know, if they come up and say that you look nice, you know, today or whatnot, uh, one, how does that make you feel? And and do you find it difficult to accept? the positive compliments for what they are, or do you kind of just think, well, you know, they're just trying to get close to me to gain something or why not? What's your thoughts on that? Um, you know, it's it's always just nice when people say nice things about you. Um, 
even if they're just looking for something. I haven't I haven't come across too many times when I've been like, oh, this person's just being nice because they think they're going to get something because I right. don't really see myself as somebody that there's a whole lot to gain from knowing me. I, I don't. Right. I don't right. I don't really see myself like that. But but you know, it's um I I think it's easier for us as people to focus on the negative. So if you get five nice comments and then you get one mean one, um the mean one is the one that you're gonna think about because somebody said mean things about you. But it and that's just kind of human nature. But I, I just try to remember that I have to be nicer to myself and I have to just learn to accept a compliment and if somebody says something nice about me you know I try to retweet it um, so that people um, like casting directors or something can see that people think nice things about me because right. <laughs> Lord knows there's enough negative things about everyone right. floating around um, right. you know I you know tell my parents that somebody said something nice or, or something like that and um, then I, I feel like it's just a positive thing for my career and not giving me a big head but if you're you know if you're in the situation like I am where you have somebody like friends who basically volunteer to check your messages sometimes but you don't really have anybody who um, you know you don't have the money to like hire somebody who's gonna screen all this stuff for you you're gonna see both mean and nice things, and um, it's hurtful. But um, I think it the mean things kind of level out the nice things and kind of keeps you from getting a big head. <laughs> right. So, right. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of hard for me to just take a compliment because it's bizarre. Um, but I I guess you know it's just kind of self-congratulatory you know we all you get a nice comment and you pat yourself on the back and it's <laughs> right. I don't know I don't I there's that little feeling of oh I did something good but we really shouldn't need you know to feel gratified by other people but we do so it's 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 kind of strange I, I have mixed feelings about it and I'm like oh I'm happy oh I have such a big head like <laughs> <laughs> right I'm not really sure <laughs> right yeah you know? Um, now, some uh, some of the negative comments have been stemmed from certain scenes from movies and uh, and certain um, photos of you modeling. Um, and in talking to you pre-interview, um, there's a difference between art and non-art, to put it nicely. Um, and from everything that I have seen, er, there, there's nothing that, to me, that would insinuate anything negative. It, to me, it's art. You know, whenever you're modeling, of course, the focus is, you know, your body or whatever clothes or whatever you're try, whatever message you're trying to get across. Same thing with the movies. Um, the movies have a story to tell, and so the different characters um, – play different parts because of course they're going to have their own little story to tell within the story. Do you find that most of the comments are necessarily coming from those scenes because you know maybe they've seen you you know you know topless or seen you you know almost just about bare bottomed or whatever um, and, and doesn't that really make you feel like you're being disrespected as a as a woman to begin with and then also as a model or actress? Yes, it's um, that's one of the things that bothers me the most. I personally don't have um, any issue with um, nudity or um, things like that if they advance the plot or if it's just a, a small kind of thing that um, is a side story or something like that. Um, it really doesn't bother me. What does bother me is the fact that once you expose yourself in any way, be it, um, you know, doing a topless photo or, um, or you know, doing an implied sex scene or, or anything like that, people suddenly think that they can speak to you in any type of way. And it's extremely disrespectful. You would never walk up to a person and 
in real life that you just saw hanging out and thought was attractive and say the things that people say to me online. Um, and I think it's really, really easy for these people who have no manners to sit behind their computer and say disgusting things in a place where they can hide and not have to answer to the way they're treating someone. And I think that's really sad. That's something that, um, you know, happens more with the whole social networking and everything just because it's more um, available. I'm, I and, and other actors and performers and things like that are more available to everyone in the world now thanks to these social networking sites. But unfortunately, that means that we're up to a lot of just nasty, nasty things. Um, people have said some disgusting things to me, and I just can't wrap my head around why people think it's okay to talk to me like that. Um, I have um, I have one friend who's a very prominent adult film actress, and she looks at some of the things that people send me, and she says, I never get stuff like this. She's right. like, I, I rarely get things like this. People don't talk to me like that. I get way more respect in the adult film industry than I do um, in the regular acting world. And that's crazy to me. Um, it, it doesn't, I, I just can't wrap my head around my, you know, porn star friend telling me that she doesn't right. get talked to the way that I do. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's concerning and it hurts your self-esteem um, a little bit, but you just have to remember, you know, okay, am I okay with doing what I'm doing? Or am I not? Is this a reason for me to maybe change my career path? Do I want to stop doing nudity? Do I want to stop doing this? Because you can make those decisions. Um, I, I would just hate to make a career decision based on the ignorance of other people. Um, but right. that is something that I struggle with often because people say extremely disrespectful things um, to me. and. I don't really feel like anything that I've done is um, like lewd or gives the impression that I'm, you know, looking for some kind of sexual attention. I don't think anything I've done really gives off that um, that vibe. So I have to be okay with it myself and just accept that those people are disgusting. Right. Now you did bring up self-esteem. Um, and, and at least from my opinion and my viewpoint, you know, with the interactions that you and I have, you've, you've been a very um, sweet and nice young lady. Um, you emailed me, you responded to emails more than what you probably should have or had time to. Um, you know, I, I've been watching, you know, movies I could get my hands on of you. I've seen your modeling. Um, in speaking with you, you, you present yourself to be an intelligent young lady. At that, um, I think anybody who just looks at you, you know, can tell that you know you're attractive. But deep down inside, even though you have people who are continually telling you this and reminding you that you're all of this, I mean, why? To you, why is it hard for you to have your self-image be in tip-top shape? You know, why do you even think that, you know, well, maybe I'm not that attractive or, you know, maybe I'm not that talented, you know, how, how does all that play into your daily life? Um, you know, I think it's one of those things where if, if you're an artistic type of person, you're the kind of person more than likely that is a perfectionist and is never going to see all of the good that you've done. I think that's just really common um, in people in this kind of career where we always could be better, could always be better, could always be better. Um, you know, I was an athlete as a kid and when you're an athlete you never rest on your laurels, you never rest yeah. on your accomplishments. It's always, okay you did great but this could be better and this could be better and this could be better because nothing's ever perfect. It's right. impossible for anything to be perfect. So. Watching yourself can be one of the most difficult things that you can do. There's a lot of people who don't even want to look at themselves. I mean, we won't even we won't really bring up Megan Fox, but I do remember watching an interview with Megan Fox where they wanted to show her a picture of herself, and she wouldn't look at it. 
and she actually made them turn it upside down and then she could look at it which I thought was really strange but I, I do think that it it kind of proves that we can all see just these things in ourselves that are negative that perhaps other people don't necessarily see. Watching yourself can be kind of disheartening. <laughs> right. You can think that you've done something really great and then you watch it and you're like, that's not at all what I thought was coming across. On top of that, you have other people um, insulting you, doing other things. Um, you know, this is the arts, acting, singing, um, writing, anything like that. This is a career path and it's the only one that I know of where it's other people's job to critique you and if they're not making you feel bad enough about yourself then those people don't necessarily get paid so it's it's kind of just a rough career path where you kind of need to keep your head up and just keep doing it but that can be difficult and it can put some major blows into your self-esteem because it is other people's job to tear you down that's what they do in this industry. That's half of the industry. Um, so it, you have to remember that every single day and that's that's the difficult part is remembering that it's this person's job to say you know things about me to, to point out either the truth or point out their opinion and maybe their opinion is that they didn't like me and they thought I sucked and well that's their opinion and it's none of my business but in regular life people's opinions of you aren't written down and displayed for the world. Right. So I have access to everyone's opinion of me. <laughs> and I'd rather not. Right. I understand. You know, it's, it's a it's a frustrating, touchy kind of industry when you're in when you're into the arts and things like that. It's other people's job to tell you and everyone else in the world how much they don't like you. Right. And um, that's just that's just how it is, and it, it puts some major blows in your self-esteem. Some days, you know, you're really up. Some days, you're really down, and, you know, you might be really down about something that was said three months ago about a movie you knew you sucked in. But, you know, you right. just, right. you know, I, people have their days where, you know, you drop your coffee, and suddenly your whole day is ruined. So that's that's dropping my coffee to me. As, right. <laughs> right, I understood. Yeah, having having somebody say something like that, that's that's me spilling coffee in my car, you know. Right. So it, it just is what it is. Some some days you don't feel fantastic about everything that you've done and it, you know, puts some holes in your in your self esteem and you know, they they either fill back up or they or they don't, but uh generally they do and you you know, just kind of keep going. I wouldn't still be here if they didn't fill back in. So <laughs> Right, right. Understood. <laughs> Well, I definitely want to end this on a happy note. Um, so just a few brief questions that you don't necessarily have to go into detail about. Um, but if you had not become an actress, what would you be doing right now? What, what would be your other job? Okay, I said no detail, so obviously you have to think about it. <laughs> no, well, kidding. Well, the thing is, I... I've never seen myself being anything except an actor or a singer. That's never, it's never even crossed my mind that I would be something else. Um, but I did make a backup plan a little while ago that I'm probably not going to implement, which was um, that if things didn't start working out by a certain age, that I was going to go back to school and be a vet tech. Um, so I'm going to say vet tech. <laughs> okay. So who's your... Brush with greatness. Oh, jeez, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so I guess these questions are harder than the previous ones. Well, <laughs> um, you know, I don't really know. That's it's uh, that's a that's a tough one to answer. There's there's just a lot of um, there's just a lot of like just really great awesome people and um, yeah I'm, I'm just thankful and lucky to have worked with everybody that I've worked with and everybody that I've met so it's hard it's hard to say <laughs> okay um, favorite book and author or author no oh, okay see I'm a nerd and <laughs> I really like Harry Potter 
<laughs> okay. So, have you read all the books? I have not read the first and second book because I started really late. I was like 19. And I was like, right. I think I'm kind of old for this level of reading. <laughs> right. So I couldn't get through one and two, but I've read I've read the third one and once, and then I've read the four, five, six, I've read seven. They've, I've read all of those either two or three times. So, and I really don't read because I'm dyslexic and it's a lot of work, but I read Harry oh. Potter. <laughs> okay, well, um, that's actually a feat because those books are not short. No, so. they're quite extensive. <laughs> so, okay. Last question, and this one's going to put you on the spot. No. <laughs> Do I even need to ask? Who's your favorite actor or actress? Oh, well, okay, so my favorite actor is still Killian Murphy. Ever since 28 Days Later, I've just been, like, obsessed. And then, like, after uh, Batman Begins, I was like, oh, my God, he's so awesome. <laughs> so that guy's just, like, super cool. Like, I love, and, like, Red Eye was, like, a field day for me. Because right. I love Rachel McAdams, and she was in that, and I can't believe more people weren't super excited about that movie because I thought it was great. Right. Um, but um, I'm also a big, huge fan of Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Okay. And um, I just, after I saw her in uh, Final Destination three, I was just like, that girl actually brought like Final Destination like. Let's be serious. It's a it's a little ridiculous, and it's a it's a lot of just like crazy hokey ways that you can die, and it's like scary and gross. Um, but like then she brought this like whole level of just reality and somebody that you could relate to into that. I just thought she was just like a really great actress, and she's just really pretty and relatable, and. Um, just like a real person, like a, the real girl that you might be friends with at, at school. And um, so there, there's something really cool about her to me that I just, I like all the stuff that she's in. I think she's just so um, real and like somebody that I would hang out with. Um, so I, I find I find the stuff she does really cool. All right. Okay. Well, one last thing, and we're going to end this part of the video um, before I give some ending information. You are in a new web series, and the second part has just come out, what, yesterday? Was it yesterday. or the, yesterday? Yeah. And, of course, starring Miss Erin Marie, or co-starring, I should say. Yes. What, 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 what's your, how, how is that? I mean, obviously, it's different than the movies because there's less time you have to put in, um, less of a budget. But um, you're actually doing comedy in this web series, and... Good, I might add, because I've seen both for like like fifty times already, and, stuff. <laughs> and, and that's just today. But um, yeah, it, it, it's comedy. How how is how is that necessarily different for you? Because in whenever you're learning to be an actor or performer, part of what they try to teach you is to be versatile and flexible. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was it necessarily hard for you to? transform from the horror drama genre to you know a web series where you do comedy um it, you know my stance ever since I moved out here and did a couple comedies and failed miserably was that I'm not funny and so I I just was under this impression for the longest time that I didn't know how to do comedy and that or that I knew how to do comedy and other people just didn't know what was funny right. and um, so I've been actually really scared to do comedy for a long time, but what I've been learning with my newest acting coach is um, that there are, there's, you know, a lot of different things about doing comedy and doing improv and, and doing things like that. But if something is truly funny and you're truly realistic in that moment, then it's going to be funny. It's going to work. Um, and I think... What's great about Paul Getz's Last Ditch Effort is that um, Paul did such a good job writing it, and it's really true to the style of Arrested Development, um, that it's very, very funny. And I, I just tried to play it as this is me 
being in this scene, and I'm not going to add anything. I'm not going to pretend, you know, something's not there. I'm not going to invent something that's not in the script. I'm just going to say the script in the way that it comes out of my mouth, and let's see what happens. And I, for once, do kind of feel like I was a little bit successful in comedy. So um, I think that's working pretty well. Um, so I'm really... I'm really happy about that because maybe I just need to not try to be funny. <laughs> right? So, Understood. So well, yeah, I, I'm 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 excited about it. It was it's definitely different, and my heart was definitely pounding when I found out he wanted me to be in it. Um, but uh, but yeah, I I think it's just really well written and it's really working out really well because it's very true to Arrested Development, which is exactly what he wanted, and it's a great show. Right. Well, we have a picture that we want to share, and it's actually a still from, well, not a still, but let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, there you go. This is the epitome of Erin Marie Hogan. <laughs> it, it really is. So, but Erin, um, we're we're gonna leave. We're gonna go ahead and end this um, video. Um, we do want to let people know that Erin uh, is a very charitable person. She is involved in, you know, some charities whenever she finds the time to actually be involved in all those. And we are actually going to be doing another video to give her time to elaborate on this. So um, we want to end this. Um, encourage you guys to check in and watch that video as well, Erin. It has been a pleasure. I, I do think you're a great actress and you, you are a smart and nice young lady. So I want to thank you for all this. And um, we shall end this and begin the next, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye.